Hello everyone, my name is Heather and welcome to my channel Bookables. I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite tropes of all time and that is books set in small towns. So it's no secret I love small towns. I kind of, I don't live in a small town. I live I guess in a small city compared to some but not really compared to others. You know who's to say. But I love books shows, movies that are kind of centered around small towns. I blame solely Stars Hollow, Connecticut on this. I just love those books that give you that small town feel where everyone knows everybody. They're very seasonal. It's warm and cozy. It's just a great trope to read, honestly. And I have a whole bunch of books that are set in small towns that I think that you will really enjoy. So without further ado, let's get on into it. First up is a very recent read, and that is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I read this recently for the gilmore -thon, which is a readathon centered around Gilmore Girls, hence probably why I'm in a very small town mood, especially as of late. But this one is set in a small town. And this book we follow a character named Florence, who lives in New York, but she's from this small town. And Florence is a ghostwriter for a very popular romance author kind of think like Nora Roberts. Only problem is is that she does not believe in love anymore. She had a very tumultuous breakup and she's like love what's that? I don't know her anymore. And she meets her new editor who's dreamy and swoony and is like hey you have two days to give me this book by this author or I'm gonna bring legal in and she's like crap I don't know what to do because I can't write about love because I don't believe in love anymore and then she gets a call that her father has passed away so she has to go home to I forget the exact town but it's a very small southern town and she left there a long time ago because people made fun of her because Florence can also not only is she a ghost writer but she can see ghosts um, so she got made fun of a lot and so she goes home and has to mourn her father who actually her family owns a funeral home and long story short basically one day she opens the door and who is at the door but the ghost of the dreamy editor he's dead and they maybe start having feelings for each other it sounds really crazy but it, it is an amazing book full of warmth such a small town vibe because in this book everybody knows everybody everybody knows Florence is back in town the romance is top notch I loved it so so much next up we have well met by Jen DeLuca this is actually part of a series but all of them kind of center around this really small town called Willow Creek I believe it's in Maryland in this first book which is my favorite by the way we have a character named Emily who has to go back home to Willow Creek to help her sister who was in a car accident and she's okay and everything but she has to help her just get her back on her feet she's also helping with her like 16 year old niece and somehow through a crazy turn of events she gets involved in this town's renaissance fair which is kind of a big deal they throw it every summer everyone comes it's a huge deal and she starts to get in kind of a hate relationship with Simon one of her niece's teachers who is a big part of the renaissance fair but at the renaissance fair Simon and Emily have this really undeniable chemistry they don't argue they're kind of really into each other but then when they're outside of the Renaissance Fair, it kind of gets bad again. Either way, again, this is set in a small town. Bonus, if you like Renaissance Fairs as well, this is a great one to read. When I first read this, I had never been to a Renaissance Fair. What am I saying? I still have not been to a Renaissance Fair, but it made me really want to go to one. And if you like the first book, you'll probably like the other ones because they all have that Renaissance Fair quality to them and they're all kind of small town. Emily works at a bookstore when she's not at the Renaissance Fair. It's just really, really really cutesy. Now if we want to take a turn from like the really cute and amazing small towns, Beartown is one for you. This one is for the readers out there that want a little kick in the gut when you read a book, you know? This is a book set in this town called Beartown and it's a very small town. I want to say it's in Sweden because this author is Swedish. Um, and basically like they're only known for ice hockey that's the only good thing really they're kind of set in the middle of the woods nobody really knows them nobody really likes them but their ice hockey team is unbeatable and then a really big thing happens that kind of divides the town in half in this book the town's golden boy and like the lead like star i guess you could say athlete of the ice hockey team is <sighs> accused of rape by a girl in the town and that town is split between people that believe the girl and people that don't believe her and it's just a really intense book this is also part of a series the third one has come out I have not read it yet because my I just have to be emotionally ready because this is one that's gonna like you'll fall in love with the characters you'll fall in love with the town but it's gonna break your heart while you're doing <laughs> but it is an amazing series that I always have to mention because I love Frederick Bachman if you want another kick <laughs> 
cut the last one for this one is One True Loss by Taylor Jacobs Reid. I know when we hear Taylor Jacobs Reid we don't talk much about her earlier work which is much more kind of chick lady romance. Her shtick now is a lot of historical fiction, a lot of women celebrities and historical fiction which I love but I also enjoy her romance. I really honestly do. This one is one that will break your heart and simultaneously will make you smile. So this one follows a character named Emma who grows up in this very, very small town in Massachusetts, hopefully I said that right, and she desperately wants to get out. And there she meets her high school sweetheart, they fall in love, they're like, we're gonna leave this town as soon as we graduate. And they do, they get married, they go off to California. She's a freelance writer and he is a production assistant on a nature documentary and everything's going great. And then on their first wedding anniversary, he gets an assignment to go to these islands and then his helicopter goes missing in the Pacific Ocean and so, they have no clue like what's happened to him. He's assumed dead and so Emma is very very upset about this obviously and so she grieves and then she decides to go home for a while because that's just where her family is. Her family owns a bookstore and things like that and basically years later now in her 30s Emma runs into an old friend Sam and finds herself falling in love again and then they get engaged and everything's going great. She's like I found love again because I lost my husband. I didn't think I would ever love again but here she is and then her and Sam get engaged Engaged and she gets a call that hey Jesse has been found he's been like on this island for years and we're bringing him back home and she's like what so obviously this is a love triangle a thousand percent and it's one that's gonna have you flip-flopping back and forth it is a very intense one but why I'm recommending this especially in this genre is because this book is set in a small town and Emily goes back home. She learns to appreciate the town that she grew up in, that she was taken, she took it for granted so much. This is a small town, I hate it, I wanna to go to bigger and better things, but now years later she's grown up and she's come back, she really appreciates the town and loves kind of the quietness of it. And yeah, it's a love triangle book for sure, but it's an amazing one set in a small town. And we have a fantasy one, kind of contemporary, Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. This is a book that is, like I said, half like fantasy but more like contemporary like kind of fiction if that makes any sense. In this book we follow two characters named Emery and August. They live on this very small island off of Puget Sound I believe called uh, Shorsa Island. I'm sorry. And they were high school sweethearts. <laughs> a lot of books today I talked about were, um, and they fell in love and then a big tumultuous thing happens that kind of pushes August off the island. Like him and his mom had to leave because they were pretty much banned from the island. Now it's like 20 maybe 15 years later and he is back because he is there to bury his mom who has passed away and everyone knows he's back and everyone's like bury your mom and leave because we will never forget what happened that night. And throughout the whole book you're just trying to figure out what happened that night, why was August like banned from this island maybe he killed somebody you don't know you figure out as you go along this book is kind of steeped in kind of paranormal see if you will but it doesn't really ever cr like really cross that line if that makes sense because Emery's family are kind of witches so they know spells and things like that and I really wish this book could took off on more in that aspect but why I love this book so much is the fact that it was set in this kind of really creepy small island where it was very atmospheric. If you want an atmospheric read, like a perfect book to read on a rainy night, this is the book for you. I loved it for that, but it was just very odd and but it was just very kind of creepy and very perfect for fall but it was set in a very small town like this was very probably the, out of all these books today was the smallest town of them all because this island is very very tiny so when they like to have secrets they have some secrets but it's a great one to read definitely a small town read for sure next up we have part of a world by abby Hymezen. this one is a super sweet romance it's about um two characters named daniel and alexis and daniel is a, from a very small town in fact he's like the mayor of the small town like everybody loves him everybody knows him he always helps out everybody everybody looks out for each other so we're talking, well, I'm gonna say that lots of time. I need to move on. But then he meets Alexis. She's an ER doctor that comes from a family of surgeons and they want her to be a surgeon, but she's just like, I'm good with being a doctor, which that's amazing. So like, get, get away parents. But either way, basically they meet and they 
kind of get together and they're basically as you can tell from the cover of this book from two different worlds she's from a big city where she works at a hospital all the time he's from a very very small town where he owns like a and b and a barn and he's trying to restore it and he's also like the mayor of this town and somehow they have to figure out how to work together it is super adorable the the small town vibes in this book might be one of my favorites because they just all band together like if one of them older like especially older ones get sick they all go over and take care of them they help out they pitch their weight basically it is just oh, I love it so much and then we have just another love song by Carrie Winfrey this one is a second chance romance about Sandy and Hank who grew up in this very small town and became high school sweethearts and they dream of bigger and better things since the trend with a lot of small town reads it's all about usually they said they want bigger and better things than the small town like you know the whole Taylor Swift thing <laughs> They fall in love, become high school sweethearts, and Hank, after high school, does make it out of the small town. He becomes this big country musician, and Sandy has to stay there because of her parents. She has to help her parents. Now, many, many years later, Hank is back in town. He has a son. He's divorced, and he's there to help out with this kind of festival, and which throws him and Sandy together, and obviously, feelings are still there. This one... I didn't love it as much, but I do really enjoy Carrie Winfrey's books. She just writes such good, cute romance. If you want a book that'll put a smile on your face and it's set in a small town because they're both trying to figure out, Hank's like, do I want to come back to this small town? And Sandy's like, do I finally want to leave? And they're just trying to figure out exactly what the relationship will be. It's a super cute one. It's not one of my favorites, but it's still a good small town one. Of course, I have to mention The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is a very popular romance book that I'm sure a lot of people have read. This can go in so many categories. It can go to Hate to Love. It can go to Alaska books. It can also go to Small Town Reads because this book follows a character named Kala who lives in Canada and then she learns that her dad is dying pretty much and she's never had a good relationship with her dad. Her dad's lived in Alaska. Her parents split up when they were young and her and her mom moved to Canada. And so her mom's like, hey, like, why don't you try to go get to know your dad before he passes? Because I just would hate for you not to know your dad. And so Kala begrudgingly agrees. And so she goes to this very small town in Alaska, actually, but she goes there and there she meets Jonah, who is a pilot because her dad is also a pilot and owns like his own pilot charter company. And her and Jonah immediately get off on the wrong foot. They constantly banter. You can cut the sexual tension with a knife. <laughs> It's it's palatable. It's there. But either way, it's set in Alaska, which was really small town. There are some big cities in Alaska, such as Anchorage, and that's all I got. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Alaska. But either way, this one in particular is set in a very small town, and, and Cal was like, I don't know what to do. Like, you know, I don't know where I can find my you know, special milk that I want or my special coffee. And Jonah's like, you're a big city girl and I hate you. But of course, they don't hate each other. You get it. It's a great one to read. So here you have some small town books that I just really love and adore. Like, I probably could have mentioned more, but I didn't want to keep us here forever. Like, I could think of easily five more to mention right now. I'll put them up on the screen so you can see in case you want some more recommendations. But I might do this video again in the future. But I love doing it. I love books set in small towns where, like I said, every one knows everybody, the camaraderie, the secrecy, you know, those kind of things. I would love to know if you have any books that you love that are, that are set in small towns. Please leave them in the comments below. As always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.